Hey there guys, and welcome to Novel With Me, the series which takes you on a writing journey from start to finish. Today we are going to continue our talk on characters. No, we're still not going to be talking about their favourite colour. It's not important. Last week we spoke about the characters' motivations and goals, their personality and their traits. You can find that video over there. Today we're going to be talking about other more subtle ways of creating a more realistic, relatable and all-around well-developed character. So we're going to be talking about their habits and quirks, any recurring emotions or feelings that they have, their personal self-image and their behaviours. Again, I just want to say if you guys feel comfortable or more prepared or prefer to fill in the character questionnaires, then by all means, go ahead. Again, I'm not a massive advocate for it. I don't think it gives you the true essence of the character, but to each their own. Right, so first we're going to talk about habits and quirks. Habits and quirks are two separate things which are more or less the same. Habits are, however, something that is a subconscious thing, like looking both ways when you cross the street or double checking that your car's locked when you lock it with the little automatic lock button. Quirks are deliberate, they're things that your character does purposefully. These are usually more visual sides of their personality, such as their clothes or their makeup, how they represent themselves, but there can be some behaviours in there as well. So, first of all, let's talk about habits. Habits are behaviours that you do regularly, that you do all the time, that have been so ingrained into your everyday life that you just do them without thinking. Things you do, but you don't really think about doing it. Maybe your character rubs their arm or bites their lip or twirls their hair. It's these little types of movements that are really unconscious that sort of give away how the character is feeling without them really knowing what they're doing. People can hop on the spot when they're excited. They can dig their fingernails into their hands when they're anxious, pull on their sleeves when they're afraid or unsure of something. This is a great way to show your readers what your characters are thinking or feeling on a subconscious level without actually outright saying it or without using any action tags. This is especially good when your character is saying one thing and feeling another. It's all about the subtext. It adds a new depth and layer to the character, it adds a new depth and layer to their actions, the underlining meaning of what they're actually trying to say. It adds a level to your storytelling that makes it more dynamic and more interesting. After all, people act like this on a daily basis. Quirks, on the other hand, very, very deliberate. Like I said, these can be behavioural or visual. Um, like, I have a character who only paints her little fingernail just on the left hand. That's her quirk. Your character might always wear the same hat, no matter what outfit. They might always carry around a certain object or constantly, constantly play with other people's hair, no matter the situation going on around them or mispronounce or misuse words on purpose. The quirks are what make them different from other characters. It what, it's what makes them memorable and what makes them stand out. Using habits and quirks can help develop your characters in a number of ways and you can use them in a number of ways. They can help identify and define your characters quickly and easily. And they can also help reveal tension and create conflict within your plot. Everything creates conflict. It's one of the great parts of storytelling. Next, their personal self-image. What do they think of themselves? What is their level of self-esteem? Are they proud of themselves, of their past and their actions, or are they ashamed of it? Do they feel like they're not good enough, or like they're the smartest or coolest person in the room? Knowing this can play into the character's dialogue, their actions, and can help the reader understand their thought processes why they say and do what they say and do. Your character's self-image can also contradict their beliefs and their traits, so you don't need to worry about them making a match. You can have low self-esteem but still be a cheerful person. You can think you're not good enough but still act confident. Next, we're going to talk about recurring emotions or feelings that your characters might have. Is your character a naturally happy person? Are they lonely? Are they depressed? Your characters might not have a constant state of emotion, but they will have a reoccurring one. Well, they might have a reoccurring one, that's the point of this part. Or feelings and emotions that underlay everything they say or affect everything that they do. People feel a variety of emotions every day, but some are always there hidden below the surface, no matter the situation. 
we can act like we're being affected by these feelings or we can push them aside, hide them, pretend that nothing's going on, but they will always be affecting how we think and how we act, especially if we're feeling them more on one day than we do on another. These reoccurring feelings and emotions can stem from your character's personality and it can stem from their quick, quick backstory. It's what I was saying before about how your personality changes from day to day. The people you are around affect your personality, but how you're feeling also affects how you act, how you, how you present yourself. Their behaviour, this is based entirely on your character's traits. It's how they present those traits. It's how they express themselves. Everybody expresses himself differently. If you got five people in a room and told them the most exciting news in the world, they would all react differently. They would all show how happy they were in different ways. And this is another great way to characterise, develop and make a more relatable character. Take someone who's angry, for example. You could have one character who is calm and quiet when they're angry, or you could have one who is explosive, loud, who hits things. You could have someone who can't be angry to save their life, and instead of sounding angry, they just burst into tears. That's me. These things can act as tells. Moments and actions which show your readers how your characters are feeling without outright saying it. If we've been following your character from the very beginning, we know that when they get angry, they start getting quieter and quieter. And you suddenly read this scene, when they get so angry, they're barely saying a word. You reader knows exactly what's up. And you don't have to say anything regarding how they're feeling. It's sort of, I suppose it's helping show her tell. We'll get to that in another video. By establishing all these behaviours and habits and recurring feelings and emotions within your story, you can use them to add real depth to your characters and allow your reader to read between the lines. It's all subtext. There is so much that you can say with such simple gestures. Really show the reader what these characters are like without saying much at all. In the description box below is a Just the Basics blog post which features everything that I've mentioned in today's video and a writing worksheet for you to get to work in creating those characters. Next week we are going to move away from planning and we are going to start plotting. But I'm going to talk about some plotting techniques just for you. And for me, because I need that information as well. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Good thoughts and happy writing!